Damon Sampaolo, and I'm going to speak to you about the dark side of emotional intelligence. <laughs> but rarely do you hear people talk about the dark side of emotional intelligence. I just recently finished an article for a major magazine just discussing that. Emotional intelligence, as most things in life, has the potential to be used for good or for bad. And the unscrupulous. <laughs> Emotional intelligence has become the standard in leadership and nearly every week there's an article coming out talking about the benefits of emotional intelligence. You're told that if you use emotional intelligence, you'll be happier. If you use emotional intelligence, you'll be healthier. If you use emotional intelligence, you'll be more successful. We're told that leaders who have higher levels of emotional intelligence will outperform the competition. But emotional intelligence, as most skills, is not inherently good or bad. It's just that. It's a skill. Election years are a good reminder of why emotional intelligence can be used to elevate or emotional intelligence can be used to manipulate. In my own career, I've done both. And I've seen the dark side of emotional intelligence in action. What do I mean? Well, let's compare Martin Luther King with Adolf Hitler. Both had highly developed skills of emotional intelligence, but both had very different objectives and both had very different outcomes. So there you can see a good example of emotional intelligence being used for the dark side and emotional intelligence being used for the good. You can observe highly altruistic individuals and leaders and even therapists applying emotional intelligence to help improve the lives of others. On the other spectrum, there's a host of other professions that use emotional intelligence to manipulate. Con artists are notorious at honing in on the weaknesses and vulnerabilities of people to manipulate and get what they want. The pickup community is based on seminars teaching men how to seduce women based on body language, nonverbal communication, and so forth, which at best they get short-term results and rarely ending up with long-lasting connections. Narcissists, psychopaths, use primitive forms of emotional intelligence as well to get what they want and to hurt people and to manipulate people. But what is the missing ingredient to use emotional intelligence for good? Well, Daniel Goldman, who's done more to popularize and promote emotional intelligence than anyone else, acknowledges Adam Grant's essay and critique of the dark side of emotional intelligence. And that element is empathy. And Daniel Goldman identifies three types of empathy. The first is cognitive empathy, where we understand how the other person is thinking. The second type of empathy is empathetic empathy, where we understand how the other person is feeling when the other person experiences an emotion, it strikes a chord within ourselves. And the third type is empathetic concern, where we feel compelled to want to help the other person because we recognize the situation and we want to improve or make the other person's life that much better. To avoid falling in the dark side of emotional intelligence requires that we use all three forms of empathy. Let's have a look at intent and introspection. In my own journey, came down to asking myself some really tough questions. I knew I was good at influencing others, but what was my real intent? Was I lifting people up and, and helping them, or was I manipulating them for my own benefit? I started to realize that my intent was ego-driven, and I was using emotional intelligence to manipulate others, and that would never end well for myself nor others long-term. I discovered the rewards of helping other people by focusing on altruism and empathy was far more rewarding and fulfilling for me in the long-term and I was benefiting other people. Clarifying our intent requires that we have a hard, honest look at ourselves, a skill set which narcissists and manipulators rarely ever have. It's not easy to look at ourselves in the mirror and be brutally honest with what we see. We have to master our own emotions, our egos, and animal nature. You know that I admit that there was a certain thrill of using emotional intelligence as a strategic asset. However, putting those same skills to work for my students and coaching clients is infinitely more fulfilling for myself and for them long term. In response to Adam Grant's essay, Goldman acknowledges it's easy to idealize emotional intelligence. But emotional intelligence without empathy in the wrong hands can be a dangerous thing. Cynical use of emotional intelligence by politicians and people seeking power should remind us that we need to be careful and honest with ourselves. We need to fully cultivate our empathy and altruistic selves if we want to serve others, be role models, leaders, and make this a better world. Check out our next video where we share with you a couple of techniques where you can apply emotional intelligence in your life. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and have a wonderful day. Yeah.